Everybody, welcome to iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSpring tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. I'm Paulina Ionina, a community manager at iSpring, and I will be the moderator for today's session. And today we're going to cover a super great topic, and we will talk about how to make your online course interactive and most importantly, why you need to do that. And uh, to share the knowledge uh, with you, I have invited my colleague Olga Novik from Customer Success Department. Hi, Olga. Thanks a lot for tuning in. How are you doing today? Hello, Paulina, uh, and hello, everyone. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you today? I'm amazing. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Polina. Uh, hello, everyone again. And my name is Olga and I will be presenting for you today. So let me turn off my camera and share my screen with you. The goal of today's webinar is to make you an expert in e-learning interactivity. So let's get straight to work as we have a lot of fun theory about interactive training and even more cool practice ahead. Before we dive into interactive e-learning, it's essential to be absolutely clear about what is, me what is meant by interaction. An interaction is a two-way action where objects have an effect upon one another, as opposed to a one-way effect. In the learning field, the term interaction is often used in connection with an active learning concept. The idea is that learners learn best when they are required to participate in the process actively, rather than simply reading a text or watching a video. In other words, it is always better to have learners do than watch. Interactive e-learning means that a learner doesn't interact with an instructor directly. It's more of a dialogue between a learner and tools through which they become engaged and involved in the learning process. In fact, it's a key element of self-paced e-course design. We'll discuss this as well, but first, let's make it clear why interactions are so important for online courses. Imagine you've been driving down the highway for two hours. Familiar road, plain landscape, nothing special to catch the eye. However, the situation is really dangerous. Boring driving lowers concentration, which may have serious consequences. The lack of learners' attention isn't that fatal, yet it leads to a waste of resources, recurring errors, and a general failure of a training program. So don't fall into the trap of believing your learners will take a learning subject as seriously as you find it and will be able to stay focused from beginning to end. The good news is that in terms of engagement, well-arranged interactions work equally well, no matter what kind of training you're working on, online, offline, or blended. When we say well-arranged, that doesn't mean you have to fill each slide of your course with bells and whistles to make it look interesting. Interaction has nothing to do with animations, and its goal is not a visual explosion. It's engagement and retention. And now, let's talk about the flow theory. It was originally invented by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, the Hungarian-American psychologist. His flow model represents the emotional state of a person while undertaking a task or activity. We are in the flow, our concentration is at maximum, and we are so involved in an activity that nothing else around seems to matter. Imagine the outstanding results your learners could reach if they studied like this. To increase the chances your learners will go with the flow, you need to maintain a subtle balance between the complexity of the training and the abilities of learners. If the task is too difficult for them, they feel frustrated. If it's too easy, they quickly get bored. However, when the task keeps them at the edge of their skills, then the learning is truly engaging. 
Normally, creating a unique learning experience for each learner is like mission impossible. However, in online courses, well-arranged interactions work exactly for this purpose. Keeping learners engaged, their concentration high, and the overall experience positive. The other challenge interactions can help you deal with the shorter human attention spans. In game design, there is the concept of an interest curve, which is a graphical representation of a player's interest in the gaming process. Jesse Shaw, in his book, The Art of Game Design, A Book of Lenses, explains the importance of planning and controlling the pace of progression. Although Shell used the curve while developing games, the concept of an interest curve can be applied to learning. There are four elements, elements of an interest curve uh, to pay close attention to while creating an interactive learning experience. So let's have a look at them. A. Initial interest. It's better when your learners are initially interested in the subject, of course, even if the training is obligatory. Then B, the hook. Having some interest before the course starts is half the work. The harder task is to keep it. At this point, you need to place something really exciting that will give learners an idea of what to expect. It will also provide a good interest margin to help retain learners' attention over the less interesting parts. For example, it can be some interaction. Then, C, D, E, F. They are peaks and valleys. Give the learners some rest and don't place big moments next to each other unless you want them to feel exhausted. And finally, G, climax. The coolest interaction that you can provide to leave learners wanting more. And by using this model as a map for interactions, you can make sure your online course engages learners from start to finish. This approach demands more planning effort, but the result is so much sweeter. Just remember the last computer game that made you forget about time. Now that we've gotten through the theory, let's find out how to turn ordinary courses into something that is more interactive and fun. We'll use the iSpring Suite Authoring Toolkit to show you how you can incorporate different kinds of interaction into e-learning modules. Uh, here you can see the five most accessible ways to make your course interactive with iSpring Suite. It includes branch scenarios, quizzes, dialogue simulations, PowerPoint triggers and hyperlinks, interactions in iSpring Suite. So let's cover them briefly. First, branch scenarios. Do you remember the Choose Your Own Adventure book series where there are different storyline twists and endings that depend on your choices? You can use branching to let learners choose their own path within a course and provide an individual learning experience for each learner. The most obvious way to use branching is to send learners who give wrong answers to explore some additional information on the topic and those who manage to do well on the advanced content. Thus, the, the degree of a challenge will vary depending on the success of a certain learner. However, it isn't necessary to mark some choices as wrong. You can create options for different personalities, like for extroverts and introverts or problem-solving problem styles. An extra bonus of applying branch scenarios is that learners feel like explorers, not just students who are taking a cram course. And next, quizzes. Although quizzes and tests are traditionally put somewhere at the end of the course, we would recommend using them not only like a final boss fight, they are also great as recurrent checkpoints. For instance, you can make small true or false questions pop up from time to time to keep learners awake. Quiz mechanics have, some, uh, have come a long way from providing learners with a mere list of questions. Now you can engage learners with drag and drop activities of your choice. And the, let's move forward and 
uh, here we see dialogue simulations and characters. And the great thing about dialogue simulations is that they are a safe yet realistic environment to practice communication skills, apply knowledge in a certain context, and get meaningful feedback not only as a score, but as a reaction from a virtual person. With iSpring Suite, you can create a standalone role play that can also be a sort of assessment, as every correct answer is awarded with points or include simulations in a course just like mini games, so that learners can stop and apply their knowledge right on the spot. The next is PowerPoint triggers and hyperlinks. These classic features aren't limited to clicking some link, so a new line of text appears on the slide. Sometimes you need to create a pop-up window, make a drop-down list, and so on. Actually, triggered animations can be quite impressive. However, if you are new to working with triggers in PowerPoint, it may seem a bit tricky and testing is time-consuming. And that is why the iSpring Suite Authoring Toolkit includes 14 ready-made interactive templates that come in handy in a huge variety of training situations. They will definitely make your course look professional and your life much easier. For example, the tabs interaction helps you present content in a well-structured form without everlasting bullets. And the labeled graphic interaction that you currently see is a great, it is great for describing what a complex device consists of. And now let's dive into the practice. So I'll switch to the course. And you see a course, Proper Nutrition for Beginners. And it will help us to learn more about healthy food and balanced nutrition. And at the end of this course, we are going to practice. Um, so, the first, uh, you see the introduction, the guidelines. And right at the beginning of the course, we see a branch scenario. And let's choose this plate then. And now, I would like to learn more about fiber. So I click here. And I'm redirected to a slide with an interaction called FAQ in iSpring Suite. We use this interaction when we need to divide some topic into a few parts and provide learners with information about every element or component separately. Then, when we click on Next, we see another interaction called Glossary, also in iSpring Suite. And here we can learn more about the products that contain fiber. Let's have a look at it quickly. Great. And when we move forward, we see a quiz that is also one of the five ways to make your course interactive. Uh, here you see true false question. Uh, let's do this quickly. Okay. And then multiple choice. Um, I'm going to fail this quiz. <laughs> so I'll choose carrots. Okay. And this is my favorite question type, drag and drop. So let me move cheese and meat here. Okay. I failed the course. <laughs> and uh, um, when we fail the course, we see the branch scenario in action, because when I click on next, uh, I'm redirected to the first interaction. And now I'm going to read this information carefully and try to take the quiz again and try to pass it. <laughs> so let's click next, next. And I'll do the quiz. I hope I'll pass it this time. So let it be beans. OK, and uh, let's move green products and berries. OK, perfect. <laughs> so uh, when the quiz is passed, we get back to the slide with plates again. And as far as interactions and quizzes for every plate are similar, then I'm ready for the check now. So let's click here. 
And here we come to the practice, and this is our first client, Jennifer. So let's start. And as we see, she wants to lose weight and needs our knowledge of nutrition. Of course, we are glad to help her. And we need to learn more information about her preferences in food. So let's choose this option. Okay. And as we can see, her breakfast and her dinner are quite good. And we need to work on lunch. So for this purpose, um, let's choose this option. Okay, uh, and we need to add more protein, fat and fiber to her lunch. And uh, let's choose this option. Okay, and let's offer her to replace sandwiches with toast, add some salmon or chicken with vegetables. Oh, we see that she is not very happy with this solution, as far as she doesn't have enough time to cook it. Well, then let's replace the mayonnaise with sauce and add some vegetables. Let's try this. Great, she's happy with this solution, finally. And we scored 30 points and now we are ready for a real client. Oh, we believe that E-learning interactivity is more than just fancy facts. That's why in this webinar, we've tried to equip you with the approaches as well as the tools. And there you have it. Some solid reasons to use interactions in your learning content and hands-on ways to actually make courses interactive. Now you are ready to create learning content that engages learners from the first slide to the last. And the iSpring Suite Toolkit is here to make it as quick and easy as possible. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you attention. so much, Olga. Uh, that's actually it. That was our short and sweet webinar. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let's see if we have um, any questions. Uh, let's check. Um, Olga, by the way, do you know uh, somebody's in the chat, Havin is asking, I registered for a trial about a year ago or so, but was not able to utilize it. Can I trial again? Uh, yes, of course, just contact us. You can uh, send us an email to customer care, uh, customer.care at ispring.com or to sales at ispring.com and uh, mm -hmm. we'll help you with another trial. Or you can try to start it on the website, but um, we'll the sales team will definitely help you with the trial, for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And, uh, Stephanie is asking, does content live on an <laughs> iSpring server or within our company LMS? Uh, so all the content that you create using iSpring Suite you can save it on your computer and you can upload it to your LMS or you can use our LMS. So there are a lot of ways to save the content, but um, like we doesn't collect the information from you. So it depends on where you save the content on your computer or inside the LMS mm -hmm. and it will stay there. Uh, did I answer mm -hmm. the question or maybe <laughs> there was yes. some misunderstanding? Thank you. Please let us know. <laughs> um, are the images customizable or is there an image library specific to iSpring? Maybe here you could um, demonstrate the content library. Yes, sure. I have um, the same course in iSpring Suite. And uh, let me show you the content library. So we have some characters, backgrounds, templates. So let's have a look at the characters. And uh, for example, when we choose a character, we can see a set of pictures of that person. 
So in different posters with different emotions and of course for the course that uh, we reviewed previously, uh, we used the backgrounds and the characters from our content library. Um, let's have a look at the backgrounds quickly. And actually, uh, the content library includes more than 60,000 items inside. So if you start to trial Vice Print Suite, you can have a look at all the uh, images that the content library includes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there are some filters to make it more convenient for you. Yeah, so um, during the trial, you can uh -huh. have a look at all the Pictures, yeah, and while you're still the here in the product, um, so. yeah, are there any oh, child okay. characters? I work in education <laughs> and would like to set up student interactions. Uh, there weren't child characters previously, says Michael. Um, yeah, so and by the way, I just, uh, yeah, yesterday I had a conversation with our customer regarding the um, children inside the content library, so children images. So um, we are discussing this internally. We currently don't have um, this kind of characters in the library, but I think that uh, as far as we uh, get this kind of requests, uh, we'll add it. So we just need... We're just in discussion with the developers, but we can let you know when we mm -hmm. add children mm -hmm. characters as well. Thank you so much. And is there an extensive medical imagery library? Uh, we have some images on, uh, like from healthcare. So, uh, did you mean characters or backgrounds? Do we? I don't know. <laughs> Lena, can you see this? <laughs> oh, no, okay, don't know. Backgrounds, okay. backgrounds no problem. icons, items, yeah, so, anything, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we have characters, as you can see. There's a big set of characters. And uh, let's go to backgrounds. It's quite easy to use filters inside the content library. <laughs> yeah, so. Let's choose oh. hospitals. Yeah, and we can see mm -hmm. the available backgrounds. And and the same is for objects and icons. So mm -hmm. awesome. Sure. And is the library included in the subscription or is it extra? Uh, the content library is a part of the subscription to iSpring Suite Max. So with the iSpring Suite Max, you get uh, full access to all the add-ons that we offer together with iSpring Suite, including mm -hmm. the content library. Um, thank you so much. Just give me one moment. Mm -hmm. um, actually, uh, regarding the uh, child ch children characters, I will definitely pass your request over to our team because we do have a special request place where we share this type of things and definitely <laughs> let them know how many people need these characters. Actually, this would be very much helpful if everybody who is in our webinar today would um, send um, some message or something letting us know that you need um, children characters in our library so please let us know in the chat that will definitely help yeah, yeah this will be very helpful <laughs> to be honest i was surprised yesterday <laughs> just i i just didn't think about that now we should have this kind of characters <laughs> when i got mm -hmm. this question i was so mm -hmm. surprised that we don't have this so i think mm -hmm. we definitely need to add these characters thank you thank you so much <laughs> Um, while you are sending in your responses, um, um, so uh, Nicole is asking, does iSpring load in PowerPoint as the program version or the web version? Uh, iSpring Suite is a desktop solution, so you need to install it on your computer. And then you'll see iSpring Suite tab inside PowerPoint. So as you can see, this is the regular PowerPoint ribbon and uh, you'll just have a new tab, iSpring Suite tab. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, so and is it population. possible to import a current PowerPoint presentation into iSpring? Yes, of course. So you just open your uh, PowerPoint presentation. And uh, as far as you have iSpring Suite installed in your computer, then when you open this presentation, you'll find this tab. And then you can enrich your presentation with the quizzes, interactions, dialogue simulations, and so on. So definitely you can enrich all the PowerPoints that you currently have with mm -hmm. new features, engaging features, yeah. and of course, interactions. Awesome. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Uh, <clears throat> so Judith is asking, are there avatars and level of diversity in the content library characters? Um, I'm not quite sure. Maybe my colleague from technical support can assist. Mm -hmm. to... So let's just. Will Anna write on chat or? <laughs> I just we definitely have the different chat, so ethnicities. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, yeah. But this, I assume no we have this filter now, right? Yeah, there are no avatars, but mm -hmm. yeah, this filter works and yeah. Okay. Um <laughs> Olga, do you know um if iSpring will be compatible with Mac computers? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it, it is actually compatible. <laughs> Just um, some of our customers, they install Windows and Microsoft Office on their Mac computers, and then they use iSpring Suite. And of course, this is um, our aim to make it compatible uh, perfectly compatible with Mac without additional installation of Windows and Microsoft Office. This is in our roadmap, but we currently don't have um, any timeline for this. But of course, we work on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is very important. Thank you so much. Um, just a moment. All right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, can we upgrade from from iSpring Suite to iSpring Max, or is it a separate license that we would need to purchase? Uh, it depends on the license that you currently have. So if this the subscription to iSpring Suite, then we can upgrade to Suite Max. And if it was a lifetime license purchased a few years ago, then we need to discuss this uh, personally. So just let us know that you would like to upgrade to Suite Max and my mm -hmm. colleagues will assist you with this quickly. Thank you so much. Um, there is also one question about integration of complex functions like variables. Um, Carlo, that I don't know of, to be honest, but I will definitely save this as a feature request. Okay, let's see if there are any questions that we missed. Oh, just one moment. Actually, it looks like we've covered, um, I think, most of the questions, if not all of them. And at this point, I would like to thank everybody for, for first of all, for joining, for spending this um, half an hour with us. And I will definitely love to see you at the next webinar that we will have next week. And also, I have some super exciting news to share. We launched iSpring Community Forum and if there are any questions that we maybe didn't cover today or maybe something that you would like to share, maybe any comments or suggestions, I would definitely love to send you over to the forum, to the discussion of this webinar. And um, yeah, I would love to hear what, what else you have to say. Um, and definitely we would love to see you at 
in this space. Uh, hopefully it will be a great place to share your knowledge and ask from, from your peers. All right. So at this point, I think we can Yes, awesome. I see you all commenting the forum feature. That's exciting. I will definitely send you another um, mailing. I think it's going to go out tomorrow. So you will be notified for sure of everything that you will be able to do there. And at this point, I would love to wish everybody a wonderful and lovely evening or day if that's uh, just starting for you and i will see you at the next webinar bye everybody and bye olga thanks for this wonderful presentation yeah thank you all and uh, goodbye <laughs>